So as this has unfolded, as day by day we've had promises of more ventilators, promises of more capacity, promises of sufficient PPE, and it hasn't happened, you know, there's rising anger. And it's quite clear that China has scored some very positive uh, points in terms of its PR, because not only has it contained the virus's own country, issued very timely warnings, you know, been very transparent about the number of cases and, and collaborated with John Hopkins University, for example, to, 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 to actually put forward that live case tracker so we all know how many cases there are all over the world. They've actually been at the forefront of delivering aid together with Cuba and other countries, aid of medical staff, aid of their expertise. They've published you know, a, a summary of, the, of just how to cope with this virus and disseminated it. And it really, it's our responsibility if we've not followed that, or more precisely, it's our government's responsibility. And I think there's a very wide campaign um, which is coordinated across the Western world, certainly between America and Britain, you know, and Labour and Tory have both come out. Lord Adonis published uh, a disgusting article when he said this was, um, he, he said the coronavirus was China's Chernobyl and China should be held accountable. Uh, as if this natural phenomenon, there's no question it's a natural phenomenon, scientists are very clear on that. It's been published in Nature magazine. American scientists are very clear that, that this wasn't a bioengineered weapon. This is a naturally occurring mutation of a virus, which is any way widespread circulation. What's disturbing about this virus is not its enormous death rate, though the, you know, the case fatality rate is high, much higher than the normal flu. It's this level of infectiousness combined with a relatively high mortality rate, which means if it really does spread, as we're seeing, you know, the fatalities can be frightening.